what, what do you think that Catan teaches us about life? Um, it teaches us a lot about life and also vice versa. Uh, one thing that I find to be very similar is diplomacy. And that's because like you have to be uh, not be the, the enemy of the table in the game of Catan. And you also don't want to be that in life and in business because if you have that, then people are going to work against you and together they most likely will uh, prevail, at, uh, especially uh, if they have enough time to do so. So uh, definitely diplomacy and also found that, and that's maybe the other uh, way around. Like uh, I, I found that to help me a lot with my Catan game to focus on uh, resources in the sense that uh, you want to be able to create as many uh, strong assets and resources as possible that will generate, uh, like let, let's say, income over time. And the, it's the same with the game of Catan where um, you want to be able to build settlements and cities over uh, the course of the game to be able to generate more resources. Like basically, you're putting your resources towards something that will generate more resources over the long game absolutely and yeah that makes that makes perfect sense what about uh also having fun what does it teach you about having fun but also i guess uh keeping your mind fresh and analyzing yeah for sure uh i i think so uh, at least uh i i personally play the game very competitively so uh some uh, yeah for Catan is about fun uh, in, in the sense that I, I do enjoy playing uh, with other uh, opponents and uh, with the trade talk, it forces me to uh, have, a, have a social experience. <laughs> so that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's a way it does help. Um, so I, I recommend that definitely to all shy people, like being uh, playing Catan is what helped a lot of shy people overcome their social anxiety and uh, that's definitely a very powerful tool and yeah that's uh it's very important to me as well and that's also one of the reasons why i started hosting king of Catan. were, were you shy oh yeah i'm definitely very shy <laughs> um and i well i i used to be more shy but yeah, now I do things like having a YouTube channel, running tournaments. Uh, That's cool. So, so Catan really has changed your life. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. Also with other experiences, but uh, Catan uh, definitely uh, helped further along that uh, along that line and forced me to use that that part of me more than uh, I had done in the past, for sure, for sure. But that's when you're using voice chat, obviously, to make it uh, truly social on the various platforms. And when you use voice chat, usually do you do that through like the Discord channel using a table or using uh, inbuilt voice chat on a platform? How do, how do you usually do it? Yeah, so we use like a program called Discord. And that's like, uh, I used to say that's like Skype, but 10 times better. And... <laughs> Uh, the reason for, uh, well, yeah, the reason why I use that is that it's a really solid program, but also we can communicate through voice chat uh, on that platform with other players. So you can play your game on Catan Universe and talk with each other on Discord, which uh, creates uh, like a very similar experience to playing uh, normal Catan, but you can play it whenever you want and whatever game mode you want with the, some of the strongest players in the game. So. Uh, that's uh, that's definitely something I wanted to create with King of Catan, and uh, I think uh, we did a good job of that. When did you learn to play Catan? Um, well, that's that's an interesting story in in the sense that uh, we did play with my uh, my my parents and my brother at home, and I wasn't like very good at it or something along those lines. Uh, but I actually learned the game by not playing the game, and that. Is, is pretty weird if you say it like that. But it basically means is that I uh, started uh, started becoming smarter in like real life and translated those thoughts. Uh, they helped me during the game of Catan. And then I started uh, winning like out of the 
uh, like 14 games against my family, I won 13. I was like, okay, wow. I want to try to see if I can make this uh, in, in like online Catan or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And well, that took a while, and but uh, ultimately I got really good at Seafarers. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's where so, so, so I... Seafarers is a Catan variant that involves... Uh sailing through the water to you know conquer an island as well right yeah exactly right. exactly and that's like a very fun part like uh Catan basically is like that resource collection game where you try to get all the the different uh resources to build settlement cities and then trades with your opponents uh but with seafarers you can also go to explore like explore different parts of the map and uh that way uh, create extra points and extra strategies and that's what I find uh, very very cool about uh, playing seafarers uh, on top of like the, the regular base game yeah so let me ask you I mean when you won those 13 out of 14 games at home how did your family react um, well I, I used some uh, tricky strategies I, I can remember so like the I don't know if the dirty monopoly is like outside of the Catan world uh, a, a common a commonly known uh, definition but it basically means is that it's when, it's when you give away for trades like uh cards that you're going to claim back with a monopoly is that what it is yeah yeah exactly yeah. so yeah I, I try to mess around with that uh in in my games with family and they are uh competitive but not really when it comes to board games uh but i'm i'm fairly competitive when it comes to board games not in the sense that i get angry or stuff like that but i try to maximize my odds of winning uh, in every game and with Catan that's very possible like a lot of people say uh, like it, it's a dice game so people only see the luck part of it but um, you're actually able to get against strong opponents like the, the best players against strong opponents can still go to 70% win rates so to me that uh, to me that proves that um, um, it's it, like the, the skill part of the game is way bigger than uh, the yeah, game is credited like. for absolutely well I, I believe that i think there's a, a heck of a lot of skill and of course there's some luck and you know one can be on a roll there's when there's dice but uh certainly there's a lot of skill um so actually do you want to maybe i don't know, also give people some tips about how to master Catan? Uh, like a thing i learned recently is when all things are equal you should put the robber on the person to your right uh, and pretend that like there's a reason, a different reason for that, because that way it's going to take the longest for um, for them to respond to you putting the robber on them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially if they have development cards, which can mean they have knights, so they can put the robber back on you. Um, it, it's it's a way, but in my opinion, in terms of putting the robber down, you just want to target the player Later. who is in the best position. Uh, sure. Because like the game, how the game is implemented is that um, you can get an advantage early by getting some good dice rolls, but trading and placing the rubber on that player is how uh, the game developers, Klaus Stoiber, uh, for example, um, yeah, made it so that the leader can be caught back by the other players. So creating that uh, big balance in the game, and that is always is it a disadvantage to to become a leader too early. It can be, it can be for sure. Like, especially if your opponents are not as skilled, then it's very good to mm. get an early start because they might not put it on you because they don't recognize your lead. Yeah. But uh, in my opinion, I, I always like being a little, a little behind the leader. Like the leader gets stolen from, gets the robber put on, and then in the end, I try to seal the win. So that's, that's like, generally uh... my approach. But... Uh, obviously, if you want to win, if if you can't really stop you yourself from having a good start, so you need to be able yeah. to win from every position and every situation if you want to uh, maximize your odds of winning for sure. Absolutely, that's very interesting that you like to sometimes kind of at least pretend to be in second place and then make a run for it, a little sprint at the end. I mean, that's also a common tactic in in different types of. Uh, of races when, when people are running, sometimes you, you get behind someone and then just at the very end try and, and overtake them. Um, that's, that's, that's really cool. I mean, it's interesting, all this strategy, all this, all, all these games, I mean, are there other games that uh, you're really into before Catan? 
Uh, yeah, actually, I've played Blue and Star Defense Battles on the... Like, there's currently a, a mobile version of it, but before that, it was big on, uh, like, just computer in a in a Adobe Flash, ver- Flash version, uh, version. And that's where I, uh, I, I started with competitive gaming. And uh, for uh, some stretches of time, I used to be the number three in the world ranked for that. So that's, that's really where I started wow. with competitive gaming. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's also like we, we you, I used to join this King of the Hill tournament, which was an inspiration for me to start with King of Catan, uh, the, the mm-hmm. tournament I host right this now. Is, this, is, this is the league, the league that you run. That's so awesome. Uh, King of Catan, if anybody doesn't know about it and want to go and play in, in some Catan leagues, that is the thing to join. So... Google King of Catan and, and join. It's awesome. But yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so what we used to do in, in King of the Hill, like you had like a, a system, you could challenge someone ahead of you. And if you beat them, you got to their place. And to make that uh, as, as balanced as possible, they obviously asked uh, people or, or strong players to become managers for the team. And that's where I got a lot of thoughts about how to run a league system like this. And I was like, okay, we like uh, reflecting back on, uh, because at a certain moment that stopped, like reflecting back on that, like how could I do this, but then better for the game I'm currently playing, which is Catan. And that is one of the reasons why I started like King of Catan, because I knew I could do, that was an, uh, enormous success, but I knew I could do a better job of that. So, so okay, so let's let's uh, just to clarify for some people here. King of Catan, how many people do you have uh, actively kind of like partaking in the in this in these uh, leagues? Uh, we currently have eighteen hundred people uh, in the in the server, of which uh, a good amount is uh, active to this day, and yeah, like a very very high, a good active activity. St- that's in terms of like uh, compared to other Discord benchmarks and uh, the top Discord servers. So that's um, and some some of the top players in the world play there as well. Right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, that's it's part partially because we have the Premier League tournament within King of Catan, which is the the tournament for the the top players. You can only qualify if you have either won a major tournament, like Mind Sports Olympiads uh, Catan tournament. Or if you, uh, or, or maybe a national championships, uh, or if you consistently do well in league tournaments in online Catan, and mm-hmm. that's uh, that's how you can qualify. And if you have done that, then you can participate in uh, the Premier League. So, who who right now do you think are are the best Catan players in the world? Um, I definitely think the Canadian national champion uh, Sarfa Tahir is one of the strongest in the world um she has also won one of the premier league championships um i actually made a video about uh and i put it on youtube as uh uh how old how old is she i have no idea how old she is but uh she's a (laughs) she's a very strong player in Catan, and it's cool it's nice to see a woman on top yeah uh (laughs) yeah for sure um and uh yeah she's a amazing Catan player and there are also like a, a lot of others i made a video on who i thought at that point were the 10 best players in in the world where uh i actually did a different ranking i don't know his uh real name but i know his online name i ranked chassis as the number one player and the danish national champion k20 is ranked second so uh, those are some of the players who I think are definitely amongst the the, the top players. But uh, overall, there's a very large group of players very close to each other at the top in terms of win rates. So yeah, that's yeah. very interesting. So what does it take to be one of the best? Um, well, definitely a lot of hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How many hours? <laughs> uh, like, I, I actually... Put in like there is a saying like it takes ten thousand ten thousand hours to become great at something to master something. I uh, I've put in a lot less than that, but um, but 
obviously I can still improve at the game. So, but yeah, I uh, I I think it should be possible with. Uh, it, well, yeah, it obviously depends on where you are already at your stage. If you have done competitive gaming and made a competitive scene before, then it is going to take you less time to reach the top in Catan than if you're just starting out with that, because you already have that uh, mindset uh, training and, well, yeah, mainly that. Like, <laughs> um, so I I assume it's going to be taking 10,000 hours if you if you completely start from scratch, but I think for most people it will take less than that if you do it in a really structured way in terms of learning, which... So, so I just want to say, if people want to learn, you've got a fantastic YouTube channel um, at, uh, under your your alias uh, Trichosaurus. Yeah. Um, and um, I think, how many subscribers are there on the channel now? Uh, I currently have 2,400 su- subscribers. Uh, it, it's growing oh, each day, so, so that uh, that's, yeah. Um, that's where I put uh, content about Catan strategy uh, mainly and also gameplay. So if you want to see the top players, uh, including myself, uh, play against, uh, yeah, like either a regular competition or against other top players, then I definitely recommend uh, watching some of those videos, like uh, some of those gameplay videos. And if you want to improve your game, get new ideas about how the game can be played, then uh, there's also a lot of content for that. So, yeah. It's really cool. I mean, it's, it's great. Obviously, YouTube videos are such a wonderful way to, to learn uh, how to get better at games. I mean, that's something you see across the board for lots of games. I mean, chess right now, there's a renaissance of YouTube videos with analysis of, of games. And, you know, it's, it's really, it's great. It's fun, really fun to see. Um, but I wonder... I don't know. Are there any actual like Catan coaches? I don't think there's nothing quite that serious, or is there anything like that? Uh, both myself and Delighted, who is uh, uh, another really big YouTuber on Ooh, Catan. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, we both do Catan coaching. Um, yeah. So how does that work? Tell us. Tell us. Well, how does someone reach out to you, and what's and then what's the process? Kind of what? Uh, uh, yeah. It's currently for, uh, very informal, um, in in the sense that people can just send me a mail. Uh, if they want Catan coaching, like actually one of my very first, uh, like, how do you call it? People who get coaching, um, they, students, uh, pupils, yeah, stu- or I yeah, know, students, students, I, I yeah. suppose, um, they reached out uh, or actually a friend of them reached out to, to me in the sense that, um, Hey, do you also like do Catan coaching? Because I would like to give it, uh, to one of my friends as a birthday gift. And that was actually, yeah, awesome. that was awesome um and yeah that's that's uh the, the then, first type of coaching so, so, i did so, so that was so so do, do you meet up like on on some sort of like video chat and then talk things through how, how, how does it work yeah that's generally the approach uh it, it depends per coaching session because like for different topics i uh do do different things like i obviously we get together in a, in a call um because like real life is very difficult right now but um and then it's either I, I show them videos and then we start playing or uh, we only do theory okay. or we uh, like it, it depends. But it's cool. It's cool because if, if, if you're playing with them while you talk to them, you can say, hey, you should have done that. This might be better that all that type of stuff. You can give them real time. feed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also feed forward in the in the sense that we uh, I can do uh, sheets um, before the mm-hmm. be, like before we start playing. So this is what you should pay attention to. And this is what I will be coaching on during uh, during the game, and I find that like, do you, do you ever ask your uh, your students to like you know go down do twenty push ups and then uh, get back in and uh, you know tell you what the probability is of rolling a I don't know <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> no, just kidding um, no uh, like in it, it depends like if we look at placements for example then i ask them to uh, look at as many boards as possible and tell me what their thoughts are on uh, certain placements and then uh, i try to get a sense of where they at right now and i try to improve their fundamentals of and their understanding of how these placements should be done like 
should you focus more on number diversity, resource diversity, production or uh, efficiency, uh, and then many other things you can pay attention to. Um, Let me ask you actually, that's interesting. How, how good is the AI at the moment for this type of stuff? Like in terms of, I don't know, like, I know you can sometimes you can play with an AI on a Catan universe or perhaps some, somewhere else as well. But uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anything like in chess where you can turn on an engine and it will tell you, like it will point out and say, hey, this is the best spot or that is, there's no such thing. Uh, it's nowhere near near chess where like chess can, uh, chess AI can calculate what is the exact best play. Uh, the Catan universe AI is structured, but uh, not on the level of people actually <laughs> like yeah it, it does placement decently well but in terms of overall gameplay it's not not as good yeah well i guess it isn't meant to be it's there to just uh provide uh, an extra body yeah necessary. exactly exactly right? so, yeah yeah um but that that is interesting to think about you know where ai might get in the future so there's definitely definitely um things to be done there but that that's cool training that's that's awesome so so you, you run leagues, you create uh, great informational content, and and you coach, um, yeah, and you play as well. How much how, do you get a chance to compete? Or what? Because at some point, we could say that you're certainly one of the strongest players out there as well. Right? Um, I don't know. That's up for others to decide. But I, <laughs> okay. uh, I, I do think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm one of the top players. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, like. I, I base that on like I I can't compete in tournaments that often because well if I'm running them then it's not as easy to compete in them <laughs> and um but like out of I, I believe my past twenty five tournaments I made the finals ten times so uh, that's wow uh, that's yeah that's a, that's a very good ratio uh, I think so uh, please don't ask me what my win rate is in those finals but. Uh, like in terms of uh, <laughs> see. It didn't always convert. Okay, but still getting there is still very impressive. And um, have you won any like major any major Catan tournaments uh, outside the what you organized? Uh, I won um, one of the strongest uh, seafarers tournaments, uh, but no base game tournaments. Okay. That's cool. What, what, what was the seafarer tournament? Uh, it was uh, one of the tournaments. Uh, well, I do have to say I did host it, but uh there okay, were okay. the like the 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 winners uh of like they like colonist io just recently uh that's another Catan platform they recently published their seafarers content so you could start playing on there as well so they did a big launch tournament for a two thousand dollar prize pool and like the winners of uh that tournament also play regularly in king of Catan. and uh, they also played in that seafarers, but they only ended up in like the the middle middle parts of the region, and uh, wow. like like uh, and I and I won that won that tournament. So yeah, that was uh, awesome. and, and it's funny. Like I I started playing with sea uh, I started with seafarers, so I kind of find it fitting that the the one tournament I won. Uh, yeah, yeah, as you said, with your family, that's where uh, yeah. <laughs> that's where you started really, really rocking it. Which, by the way, shows that your family's pretty uh, advanced when it comes to gameplay, because a lot of families would just stick to the base game. The fact that you guys were playing an expansion, um, that's that's yeah, cool. I think so. Yeah, the, they they uh, they enjoy the uh, just building ships and uh, just exploring new parts of the of the of the map uh, the most. So that's why we play a lot more seafarers than the base game i think and i just find it easier to win seafarers than the base game so it's a win-win situation for it in that sense absolutely that's cool so and back back to the base game like what what are like the strategies you love what would you recommend for people obviously there's a lot of ways to try and win but uh what do you recommend people go for um I guess that's where it <laughs> ended. Yeah, oh, I, I think the strongest strategy, especially if you play against not necessarily uh, people who study the game a lot, uh, is play mm -hmm. or we cheap and get cities and development cards because people. Okay. The, it's a really good strategy to stay behind the leader, and because you can get cities with the ore and wheat later in the game, you can 
win the game more easy uh, that that way uh, because uh, the not so skilled players are not going to recognize you're playing a strategy that catches up in the late game. Mm-hmm. And also, you, you know, as you say, like they're going to be having probably a more diversified set of resources and have everything. They're going to see that you're you're struggling. You know, you can't build that extra settlement at first, and it looks it looks a little bit weak and. And obviously, development cards. Nobody knows what's under there, so they yeah, don't look exactly. Uh, first, yeah, right? and they also might be afraid of it being a knight, so they can could be able to put oh, the yeah. robber back on you. So that's that's also yeah. uh, an added benefit of the Orbi cheap against, uh, well, people who don't study the game. Um, so that so that means you would be happy in that placement to literally just get ore, wheat, and sheep without uh, without brick. And yeah. that would. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Like the ideal version is that you get either wood or brick, not both, because then it looks too ah, strong, uh, okay. like you said. Um, but if you have one of those, uh, it's it's a little easier because you do need settlements. Because if you only build two mm. cities and no other settlement spots, you need uh, to get That's largest hard. army and four extra victory points. Otherwise, you can't win. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you might be able to trade your way into or something, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's easy. <laughs> right. oh, it's easier if you either have a wood Much or easier. a brick uh, to go along with that, so you can. But against that like if you if sense. you want to play against like these really strong players, it matters a lot less what you do with your placements. So you can just well, I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. recommend just playing only on wood. Uh, but it it matters a lot more if you have solid production numbers, like you do need to get cards, otherwise you can't do anything. And you yeah. also need to be able to uh, trade a lot with your opponents and recognize who is in the lead and things like that. Yeah, At the higher level. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. It's cool. You know, I love playing Catan. I have to say, um, as a as a tournament organizer, a bit like you, I often you know don't get to play as much as I as I'd like to, and uh, and I do love I do love Catan when I get a chance to play. What's the difference uh, of playing online versus offline? Mm, some people say it's a really big difference. I think it's in terms of strategy, it's not as big because uh, you can well. There are multiple versions of, of online as well. If you do online with uh, voice chat, like we do in King of Catan, then the difference is not as big. Mm-hmm. If you just play an auto match on Catan Universe, then the difference is very big because there's no table talk, there's no uh, trading yeah. through uh, negotiations. And um, so that, that's definitely a very big difference. But what I wonder, hold on, when you were playing online, can you offer a trade for a card that you don't have? I don't think you can do that here. Can you? I don't remember. Sorry, could you say that? Can you offer a trade for it? Like, can I offer, can I offer, I'll say like, I'll give wood for ore, but actually not have any wood. No, I don't think I don't you think can, you do, can that. do that. Well, you can do that online without but, voice but chat. You, you, can, could you can do say that. that in... Oh, I see. I see. Because, because. Because basically, you could, you know, yeah, that's true. I guess you could still say it with voice chat. Because in real life, yeah. you can do tricks like that, and then kind of say, you know, back out and get information that way, and, and show things you don't have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You don't have. Uh, that's interesting. Also, like by the way, this is just kind of really maybe kind of a bit of a nuance here. But uh, are you allowed allowed to say? I don't know. I don't remember what what the rules are. But can you say I'm going to give you here's can you do a trade where one side, let's say, gives 10 cards for one card? Is that allowed? It's technically not not allowed, but um, it, it depends. Like, if, if the other player can directly win with that, then it's not allowed. But Okay, you don't allow it because that's, yeah, yeah, that's king making. Basically, uh, yeah, like you're trading someone else to win. So that's, uh, so that's obviously not allowed according to the rules. But I don't think if you do it then for one trade with someone else it's not allowed okay interesting and and will that will the, the online platforms allow you to do that they can yeah okay probably will interesting crazy because yeah that does sound a bit a bit weird i've always wondered about those things uh but yeah king making is not very cool king making obviously is when you've got a situation where you might be in second place and You'd rather let somebody else win before somebody else passes you and pushes you to third or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
and and the fun thing is is that uh, like when you're playing with competitive people uh, nobody is going to do those 10 for 1 trades and if you're playing with people who are very casual and easily give up people just altogether stop playing so uh, I think mm. that's that's the way the problem is solved. <laughs> Klaus Tauber is the inventor of Catan, and uh, I wonder if you've ever had a chance to meet him. Uh, no, actually, no, no, I I haven't had a chance to uh, to meet him yet, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that uh, that's something I would uh, really like to do for sure, and uh, obviously I would like to uh, play a game of Catan with him and see who is better. I, I did, uh, <laughs> I did see, uh, uh, a video where he and his brother, no, he and his son, uh, who, who game tested the, the game a lot. Um, and they, they gave a couple of tips. So, uh, that's what I found interesting. And, um, yeah, so yeah, I would definitely like to play, uh, with him and definitely, um, yeah, I would like to talk to him about the game and yeah. how he came to uh, creating the game in that way. Because uh, it's a, it, like what I what I see, I, it's very uh, there's a very a lot of similarities between uh, developing uh, businesses and developing uh, within the game of Catan. And I actually found like I was doing a lot of. Uh, research for myself in terms of how can I create King of Catan? How can I uh, make that a uh, profound platform? Uh, and I actually was able to use those tips in my games of Catan as well. So uh, that was that was very interesting. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's interesting about creating games. And it's really cool, by the way, that you saw him also giving tips because uh, I could say that that gave you probably inspiration to do what you do to some extent. Um. Well, yeah, I, I think so. I was already uh, on my, on my uh, YouTube, like I came across that by doing market research uh, around like what videos are already out there uh, for for YouTube. So yeah, I uh, that, that's how I came across it. And uh, that's also how I found it. And uh, yeah. It's really cool. Have you ever thought of trying to design your own game? I have, yeah. Like in my childhood, I actually developed a lot of games not not board games well i did try but that didn't really work out because i didn't really have uh that intelligence then uh but uh it would be interesting like i, I do think i have like a lot of talent for designing games in the sense that like i, I coach a sports team and uh therefore uh i i often try like when i can't come up with something to improve their game I try to uh, design a game around the thing they are improving. And that's actually what I find the most fun to do with with coaching uh, the, the sports team. What, and What game, what, what, what sport is that? Uh, it's Corfball. Um, and to give uh, everyone a little bit of a thought of that, it's somewhat like basketball, but you can't dribble the ball. So that's... That's cool. I think in, in, in England, they have a similar thing called netball. I think I don't know how how similar those things are. Uh, I, I also... don't know. I I don't know a lot about netball, so I I can't tell exactly <laughs> okay. how. Uh, it it was based on a Swedish sport, I believe, called ring ball. But okay, uh, that's at least that's what Wikipedia says. So uh... that's cool. So you can't dribble. You can run and catch, and then shoot basically. Yeah. And pass. Yeah. Um, a little bit like ultimate frisbee. I don't know if you ever played ultimate frisbee. I, I I know yeah I I have played it on in in my high school. Um, it was very fun to do. I wasn't very proficient at it, but uh, yeah, it was very fun to do. And um, well, obviously the ball and the frisbee are very different uh, very, different, very different. Uh, things to play with. But yeah, I, uh, I I do see the comparison. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, so but it's a great idea. You're absolutely right. Any anything you want to. If you want to learn, a game is a great great way to learn. So even for a game, if there's a weakness and you're able to create some sort of drill, some sort of game around that, that's a very powerful tool. And um, and I wonder, you know, in a sense, you could say that the leagues that you run, they're a meta game of sorts, right? People are playing uh, Catan, but they're playing in a meta game where they have to win a tournament. And that's, so, you, you know, you have designed a type of game to some extent, a meta game. So what do you think is the future of Catan? 
the future of Catan will uh, ver- uh well it will uh, depend a lot on how uh people will react to it when the pand- uh, pandemic and the lockdowns end and that will uh it, it will also matter a lot for online Catan but I definitely think uh, because the online Catan scene has grown a lot uh, during the pandemic. And I think it's here to stay. Uh, I'm, I'm quite certain of that. And that way, I think the game of Catan in general will grow even more than it already has. Because it has gotten a lot of influx of players. And also a lot of new players who don't even know that Catan is also like a board game. They just know it as an online game. Um so I think that will ge- uh, definitely generate uh, a lot of new players for uh, the game of Catan. And uh, yeah, I, I expect it to uh, also grow into esports. If the all the parties want it, then it could become an esports in the sense that it already has a really big foundation in terms of Catan has online, uh, like, like worldwide been sold between 25 and 30 million times so amazing yeah and uh with like millions of players online i think there is a good foundation for companies to invest into tournaments and and by the way just to give context to that figure when you sell 25 million or whatever 30 million copies physical copies yeah that that's usually for a lot more people because you get at least like you know three four people using that set sometimes much more yeah. So that means it's probably reached over 100 million people. For sure. Physically. And that's yeah. before even going online. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and that's uh, uh, th- that's why I believe there is a strong foundation for uh, esports for Catan. And I definitely think that will happen at a certain uh, certain point. So, yeah. So that, I'm sure, that's I'm sure you will be there. You. you will be there to help make it happen. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, stimulating factor towards that uh, and with with online Catan, with Game of Catan, with my YouTube channel um, and also by coaching some of the strongest players uh, or, awesome. or, or some of the strong, uh, strong players into uh, even stronger players. So, yeah. Cool. Well, hey, Hank, it was, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Um, I'm, I know we're going to get to uh, hang out a lot more in the future and just want to say, yeah, uh, I think what you do is amazing and and thanks, thanks for for everything that you you give to the world. Thank you. So let's as let's well. play let's let's play Catan sometime. Yeah, for sure. We've uh, we're, we still have that scheduled. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me, Ethan, and uh, I wish all the best health to everyone. Awesome. Yes, yes. And of course, it's a great distraction. All these tournaments are in the pandemic. I got to say, that's been a really great public service. So yeah, and obviously, good health to everyone. Cool. Alrighty. Thanks, Hank. Take care. Take care.